This is a very, very low maintenance and autumnal lunch. Because I don't know about you, but when it comes to lunch, I really can't be bothered. So first I started with a pack of butternut squash and some onions and some peppers. I wasn't sure if they were out of date because they did smell a bit funny, but I checked the package and they were fine. Then to the vegetables, I added some honey for a bit of sweetness, some olive oil, because you can't skip on the olive oil. It just makes everything taste so much better. Um, some cinnamon and then also some smoked paprika after that. If I had pumpkin spice, I would add it at this point, but I don't. So if anyone knows where I can get pumpkin spice, please let me know. Then I just mixed it all together and I put it, oh, it's back to front. I put it in the oven at 180 and I put that in the oven for half an hour. So that's the longest bit. Then I really struggled to get the parchment paper off, um, but I needed it so I could put my chicken on top. This is my first time trying this chicken. It's the mango, coconut and lime one. It's pre-prepared, so it's going to taste good. It also saves a lot of time when it comes to lunch. I don't really know why I'm zooming in on the raw chicken, but that's what it looked like. Then I just gave the vegetables a little zhuzh and moved them to the side so I could fit the chicken in and I let that cook for another 15 minutes. Then I got this pre-packaged quinoa because who has time to cook quinoa, let's be honest. And then I put it in the microwave and sorry, waiting for things to microwave is the most painful thing ever because it should be a short amount of time, but it feels like forever. And then here's all the food done and I just assembled it basically. So I put the quinoa in and then I put the vegetables in and then I put the chicken in you know how it goes. Here's me very proud of myself, even though I didn't really do a lot. And then I added some salt and pepper after this. It was so good. If you like rice, give this a try. It will taste so good. You're gonna take your butter and your garlic and uncooked rice, saute that all together until your butter is melted. Then add milk and water and a little bit of salt. You're going to let that simmer for about 20 minutes until the rice is cooked. It's so good and very, very easy. So for today's episode of my 10 minute meal series, we are doing chicken quesadillas, which has to be one of the best comfort meals of all time. But of course, we're not using chicken because I'm vegetarian. We're using Daring's original plant-based chicken pieces. The texture of these is so shockingly good. All you have to do is just pop them in your skillet with some seasoning. And this is a perfect option when you don't have time to make your own like extravagant meat substitute. You can just cook it straight from frozen. And then here, as always, I'm cooking my tortilla and some hot sauce and butter, adding my cheeses and my plant-based chicken. And that is basically... Are so bomb and they're super easy and cheap to make she actually passed away a couple years ago so i can't ask her like exactly how she did it but from what i remember she always had potatoes in there i boiled three but i only used two of these and just boiled them whole until they are soft and um, you can peel off the skin and then i used a whole chicken and just shredded it up you can use leftover chicken leftover whatever type of meat that's what my mom always did um, and then i added a can of tomatoes just for flavor and texture and just a whole bunch of seasoning just throw some seasonings in there mix it up taste it you can always add more i also added some garlic salt after i mix this up and then yeah it is gonna look like this doesn't look that cute but i promise it's gonna taste bomb and then you want to heat up some tortillas this is how i do it um and then i threw some cheese in there threw in the filling and then added more cheese and this will make like 30 tacos um, I just use a whole bag of tortillas and then you just want to cook it on both sides for a couple minutes until they are nice and crispy like that then just add some hot sauce or salsa and it is so good y'all I promise I've literally been eating this like every night for two weeks it's something I made when I was like starving the other night and now I can't stop eating it so I'm just letting this turkey fry up for a minute 
Okay, so now they're browning a little bit. I'm gonna move them over to the side. I'm gonna add two corn tortillas, mozzarella on one, Munster on the other, a little Tabasco. No, oh shit, now I'm gonna add my turkey. Freaker. Let it fry a little bit longer. I'm gonna add salt because I'm a salt freak. I love salt so much. I know it's a little weird, but like, don't knock it till you try it. My salt cream. Okay, what do you consider a comfort food? Because I like the comfort foods change. I like that they change with the seasons, with what you're craving. I like that they change person to person. Because I have a series all about cooking for my future kids, and I want them to have a strong, stable relationship with comfort foods. But I also mean comfort foods by my definition because growing up, I was taught comfort foods are something you eat when you're like sad or lonely or depressed. And I was also taught that they're foods that are quote unquote indulgent or considered bad for you, which we all know is a dumb term, but I digress. But then in that messaging, comfort food like lost all of its comfort because in my head I was like, oh, this is a food I shouldn't eat. I'm only eating it to feel better about said negative emotion. And then I would feel guilty. And that is a zero out of 10 opposite of comforting. And again, this is speaking from my personal experience. I know a lot of people have great relationships with comfort food, which is why I had to find, define, refine. It's a lot of fines, but like refine my term of what comfort food meant to me. And that's when I found that to me, it means like meeting an ultimate craving in a kind of simple way, but it doesn't have to meet like the rules of a meal. So this is one of my ultimate comfort foods because it has zero protein and is exactly what I'm craving. What are some of yours? Sometimes I look in her eyes And that's where I find a glimpse of us And I try to fall for her time You look really tired. Is everything okay? No. I feel like boo-boo. My husband's boss is in a bad mood because his soon-to-be ex-wife overcooked his steak. In middle school, we had to bring in a dish sharing a part of our culture with the class, and I had no idea what to bring. So I asked my dad if he could help make something, and he immediately thought lo mein. It's a very versatile and quick dish, and for a classroom of kids, it's also very affordable to make. My dad made a vegetable lo mein for the class. He said he likes it better with chicken, but really, you can add whatever protein you like to this dish. Using lo mein egg noodles, vegetables, and meat, it's also a great dish when you have leftover produce in the fridge to make something delicious. Along with making the lo mein, my dad came in and talked about Chinese history and characters. The dish was such a hit that the teacher asked if he had made more, but my dad said it wasn't a free restaurant. This is such a versatile and easy dish that you can make with restaurant-style finesse right at home. Lectures by my dad not included. Alrighty guys, in this week's search for the world's most comforting foods, we're making French onion soup.
Every time I make this dish, I think about my mom. It was the first dish she taught me how to make, and it's really funny because it has nothing to do with our culture. You would think that as a Lebanese mom, she would teach me a dish from Lebanon as my first one. But instead, I was taught this amazing Italian dish. She couldn't have taught me a better recipe. You need patience and skill to make this because this takes up a big chunk of your day. Because of this recipe, I learned how to chop and dice onions. I learned how delicate extra virgin olive oil is. And adding butter enhances the flavor of the whole dish. Even adding spices to your onions as they're being sauteed is a very important step. It elevates the flavors of the spices. They become so immersed with the onions and the oil and the butter. Sauteing the meat without adding the spices first is simply not the same. Even this part of allowing the meat mixture and the marinara sauce to fuse together and combine. Giving it that time, allowing it to thicken is so important. Rushing that step won't give you the same overall effect at the end of the dish. Also, fresh mushrooms and canned mushrooms are totally different. As a matter Matter of fact, this is probably the first dish that taught me about herbs. I thought that adding dried basil should be enough, but I quickly learned that fresh basil is so potent that leaving it out will not give you the same result. I made this dish over and over every time thinking, oh yeah, now I perfected it. But every time I made it, I learned something new. I learned about new spices and new technique. Even creating the layers was a skill. If I rushed through this part, then the final result felt like it had an element missing. Patience was an all-around skill that I needed to learn. Patience with myself because I gave myself such a hard time if a dish didn't come out the way I wanted it to. And patience with the dish, giving it enough time to do what it needs to do to combine the flavors. Adding cheese, what kind of cheese and how much cheese to put is a whole other thing that I had to learn. It was kind of like being in culinary school, but without the professionals there to teach you. There were plenty of times where I couldn't rely on my mom to tell me what to do. I had to figure things out on my own. I mean, there are plenty of cookbooks out there with amazing recipes, but we all know that reading about something and actually doing it are two completely different things. It's the doing part that hones in on our skills. So for me, making this one Italian dish actually taught me how to make so many others from different cultures, even from my own. Every recipe I make has a direct correlation to this first one that my mom taught me, and I will forever be grateful for that. Now let me feed you. Let's make some more vegan comfort food with this sausage casserole. Isn't it pretty? You know what, I'm just gonna have to have too much of a spoon. Honestly, if food isn't tasty enough to make me do this, I don't want it. <laughs> so, roughly slice your veg and give it all a quick stir fry. I opted for onion, peppers, and carrot with a bit of garlic, always. And then it's time to make our spice mix. So the main point of making this recipe video is actually to be a reminder that you do not need to be spending money on a seasoning packet when you have all the ingredients on your spice pack. We can make this from scratch. Um, dried onion, dried garlic, paprika, chili pepper, black pepper, cumin. We have all of this. Minus a few ingredients that read like chemical compounds, which I don't love eating at the best of times. This is everything I read on the packet. It's the same. So we're gonna add that to our veg with tomato puree, tinned tomatoes, some vegetable stock, and water. The last thing to add is a flour slurry to get that glossy, kind of plasticky look and consistency that screams comfort food to me. Let that simmer whilst you grill your vegan sausages, then check in some herbs and season to taste with salt and pepper to finish. It's like the package seasoning, the elevator. No trying to my product. This is my miso udon noodle soup. And all you need are 15 minutes. First you want to slice some oyster mushrooms, saute in oil and a splash of soy sauce and leave on the side for now. In the same pot add garlic and ginger, then pour in the veggie stock and water. Next I'm using hakubaku organic udon noodles which are made in Australia the Japanese way. Cook them in a separate pot then add to your soup with your greens. Add a spoon of miso paste with some of the broth, then mix into the soup and don't forget your mushies. This is my most viral recipe. It has a total of over 30 million views. It's my grandma's crunchy lemon parmesan salad and there's truly nothing like it. It only requires a few ingredients and what made it even more special this time is that she was here to make it with me. It just goes to show that some of the most delicious dishes are also the most simple. Foley. 